Hi, this is attorney Mike Gravel and coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today we're going to look at Goliath season one, episode three. It's good stuff. Let's do it. Well, we ended the last episode with uh, Billy McBride's client getting hit by a van and she does in fact die. And uh, he has this little emotional speech over her body uh, where he does the whole David and Goliath thing, which is the, the idea behind the name of the, of the series. And then, uh, well, I don't show it, but he makes a little joke about uh, this being a quote from Hoosiers, which of course it's from the Bible. And took out a stone and slung it. And st st struck the Philistine on the head. In this next clip, they clear any doubt that this is uh, ac accidental. Of course, it was uh, a directed hit by somebody who didn't want her to proceed with that case. Thank you. I feel I've discharged my duties as a citizen. You have a nice day. And here, Billy gets uh, kicked out of uh, his client's funeral for no good reason. Family. Well, the sister-in-law. Well. Listen, we were really close friends with her, so I'm very sorry. Well, we just we just want to pay our respect. I've asked you both to leave, but you know. Meanwhile, back at the uh, evil firm that uh, Billy McBride you, uh, helped start, uh, th th there's this bit right here, which is deliciously awful. Um, it's it's a second year associate suggesting she's going to explain the uh, intricacies <laughs> of uh, dismissing a case to a seasoned partner. This isn't quashed until the contempt is vacated. Maybe I could, um, I could walk Mr. Cooperman through the risks. <laughs> oh, that's wrong on so many levels. First of all, I, I don't know why they keep talking about quashed unless it's used in California. It just sounds like somebody trying to be an attorney who's not uh, to, to somebody who does this. What, what the defense is seeking is a, is a dismissal with prejudice. You're not talking about quashing a case. You're talking about getting a case dismissed. Um, again, you know, the, the term quash, at least in Illinois, in Chicago, is used for, for service and, and uh, subpoenas and that kind of thing. If you want to get rid of a case, you want it dismissed with prejudice, plain and simple. Here Billy throws a little hissy fit, which uh, is actually good because it sort of sets up the whole thing. It, 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 it does uh, give a, a nice uh, overall theme to what's going on here. I actually know what I'm doing. When are you going to realize that? I'm going to find out what kind of dark ass shit's going on here. We do have a dead friend, remember that? So you in or out? All right, this next little bit is also deliciously awful in terms of law. It really is, is, is not good. Not that they sort of get it right, but the reactions are, are all wrong. Um, we, we start with the fact that uh, they got an amended complaint where Billy finally uh, gets a proper plaintiff, namely the son of the person who was killed in the explosion and uh, refiles his old complaint except uh, using the son. Well, the son would be the only proper party uh, given the facts that they, they have in this show. Awful death of the decedent, Ryan Larson, his father, as previously alleged, blah, blah. After that, it's basically the same complaint. Okay, that makes sense. He would refile the same complaint except have the proper party. So that, that makes a lot of sense. But uh, here uh, we start with the general counsel and they're trying to explain it to the audience, but uh, from an attorney perspective, this is just plain hilarious. This bullshit, where we are is, and correct me if I'm wrong, we do not have to settle because the statute of limitations has expired. McBride is barred from refiling this in court, correct? No, big dummy, you are not correct. Uh, <laughs> they actually get it right, but what's funny about it is that a practicing attorney would be that far off the mark. I, I get it, he's general counsel supposedly, and they can be a little clueless in litigation, but this is basic stuff. <sighs> Tell him. Statute of limitations wouldn't apply to a minor. Oh, that's my favorite. The fact that the general counsel is is surprised by by the fact that uh, the statute of limitations is told. By the way, they get it wrong. The statute of limitations does apply to a minor. It's just told until they reach the age of majority. That's, I guess, a little technical. But 
um, they, they get the point across. Yes, he can still file the case because the minor hasn't reached the age of majority and he's got a viable action. The end. All right, this next little bit is is uh, also good in that they get it in, but uh, they, they miss a lot. And it, it's just going to give me a little chance to talk about law stuff. <laughs> Uh, no, Your Honor, but Code Section 372 is pretty clear that if appointed, I would hire Mr. McBride to pursue the case, which he's already started. Your Honor. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're talking about a wrongful death where somebody died as a result of an explosion. The only heir, the only taker in this case would be the son who was related to him. And uh, they get to the son, uh, it doesn't really matter how, uh, and, and that's delicate in and of itself. But what they're trying to do here is have their referring attorney named as guardian ad litem. Um, she has a huge conflict. She would get a referral fee to the, to the, from the attorney, Billy McBride, who's handling the case, and she shouldn't be appointed guardian ad litem. Although, to the show's credit, they do recognize that. The defense attorney makes that uh, argument, and uh, that argument would win every time, in my opinion. But they just do it, and I understand why, for the plot to move along. They, they address it, which is good, and then they just have the judge ignore it, which is fine. So they appoint her guardian ad litem, it means guardian at litigation, basically. So during the for the purpose of uh, litigation, so that so that they can uh, make decisions based on that. And one, once appointed guardian ad litem, she appoints Billy to uh, handle the case, which does make sense. He's investigated it and, and all that sort of stuff. The conflict does not make sense. And then they blow off another large issue here, which is you would, in addition to the guardian ad litem, need a guardian of the of uh, the minor's estate. Or, the, or rather the, the decedent's estate here, and uh, that would probably be um, uh, the minor's mother who is opposed to this whole thing. So it would be a big problem, but they, they, they just sidestep that, that's fine. But uh, th that's what's really going on here. Um, th they do kind of half get into it, so it's, it's good. They address some of the issues, but then it's not very realistic in what actually occurs. Mr. Patient is appointed guardian. A guardian may choose the lawyer she believes has the best interest of the child in mind. Therefore, Mr. McBride is appointed to handle Jason's lawsuit. So after Billy finally gets the real client, uh, namely the son, and, uh, and, and gets appointed to handle the case, they go back in chambers. The j judge says, you've, you've got a day for an offer of proof. Again, this is more of a plot moving device. It, it wouldn't go that fast and it, 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 that's, that's sort of unrealistic, but the, but the basics are there. So that, that's pretty good. And, and uh, Billy goes out to get um, evidence and he finds some real good evidence here. Man, I ain't saying shit because I don't know shit. All I know is what I saw. So he gets evidence, uh, he gets the video from the, the guys on the boat who saw the other boat blow up and he also collects some debris from, from the explosion and uh, finds a disgruntled former employee of, of the, the company that uh, identifies what that stuff is and files an affidavit. And yes, th this is a good offer of proof and they, they, they make it, they expedite it, make it happen faster than it is likely to occur. but. Um, from a legal standpoint, it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that that would do it, and uh, and he presents it to the judge here. Explosion. Match of the fuel tank. This is the declaration of one Alejandro. And here he is showing the debris, which uh, really does corroborate the video. I Larson was killed. These are remnants of the debris that rained down on the Marquez boat immediately following the explosion. And that can be confirmed in this declaration there. And this is the affidavit of John Doe. So I've made fun of some of this stuff, which is kind of silly, but uh, a lot of it is good. And this is sort of good. Again, it's expedited, but after this offer of proof, and they're back in chambers, so it's a little loose, the judge tries to get them to settle. It's exactly what would happen. And, it's, and that's actually fairly realistic. And they're, they're going back and forth, but not, it's not getting anywhere. And the, and the judge looks at uh, what's been offered and says, yeah, I mean, you know, looks like we should proceed with this. There's, there's no reason to dismiss this case, for sure. Well. Well, 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 folks. We have ourselves a lawsuit. The takeaways. 
Uh, Billy finally gets his uh, his case. He actually has the proper client, and uh, we they appoint a guardian ad litem who appoints him to handle the case, which uh, does make sense uh, if you if you're willing to ignore the conflict, which they were. Um, and uh, he he gets the video and the, and the, the debris and an affidavit. And yep, that's that's gonna overcome it, overcome the emotion to dismiss, which is effectively what. Uh, what they're doing. The, the, the judge sort of brought his own motion to dismiss Sua Sponte, as we would say, effectively, in, in what, what was happening in terms of the plot. Um, but uh, he said, well, I need an offer of proof to continue. And he got an offer of proof and said, yeah, this is worth uh, worth continuing. So that's the, the big issue. Also, we have the confirmation that his former client um, died. And, uh, and we start to see some of the contours of the extent of the evil uh, in, in this case. Here at Law Talk, we do a lot of videos answering common legal questions. We also do reviews of law in the movies and then on TV. We also share some of our more interesting cases. We're always putting out new videos. So if you like that, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell.